Today I want to show you my process for making high quality battery cables on a budget. For that we're going to use these simple and inexpensive crimping pliers that you can get for like 20-30 bucks but the results actually surprised me. And using crimping pliers eliminates the need to solder the wire lugs onto the wires which often can create a weak point in the connection so it's nice to have a tool that you can pick up for a few bucks and that actually works pretty well. So let me show you the whole process. The wire that I use is 6 AWG or 16 square millimeter welding wire that is called H01N2D and that is super super flexible. Now the first step is to determine which wire lugs you need. They look like this and you can get them in all different sizes. You can get them in straight or with a 90 degree bend. The size of the hole is determined by the wire size and now we need to move over to the bike and check which terminals the wires actually have to hook up to so we can determine which wire lug we actually need to choose in the end. On the BMW, the positive lead hooks up right here to the starter solenoid, which needs a M8 ring terminal. And the ground lead connects right here at the bottom of the engine, which needs a 90 degree M6 terminal. And on the battery side of both of the wires, I need to add a M5 ring terminal each. Once you know which terminals you need, and also how the routing has to be, you can go ahead and cut the wire to length. But leave a little bit of slack, because we first want to do the terminal that goes onto the bike. And then you can route the wire and exactly determine where you need to do the second cut for the second terminal. And if you're also going to get these crimping pliers, they often come in a set with a like wire cutter that is for big wires like these. I first thought ah, what a waste but they're actually quite handy of course they make a very precise cut. So let's make the first one right here and here you can see how nicely that is cut off. So actually quite a nice deal to get that one as well with the crimping pliers. Now that the wire is cut to length we need to go ahead and actually determine how much of the insulation we need to strip. So take your wire lug that goes onto that end and measure how deep the hole is. For this one, it's roughly 15 millimeters. So we're gonna strip 50 millimeters of the insulation. And what I found works quite well is a pipe cutter. This one is for copper pipes, relatively inexpensive, but you don't need this. This is just a nice to have tool because you can just go around and make a very straight cut. If you don't have one of these or don't want to get one, then you can also just take a precision knife and do it by hand. When stripping the insulation, you need to be careful to not cut any of the copper strands, which actually can happen a lot easier than I expected. Now, before we can crimp on the wire lug, it's important that we cut a fitting piece of heat shrink. And since I only use black cables, I'm actually gonna mark the positive lead with some red heat shrink, and then the ground lead gets black heat shrink. Now this goes over the wire, and then we can put the wire lug onto the copper strands. Here you have to be careful to touch all of the little copper strands inside the wire lug and then it actually makes sense to test on your bike how the wire lug has to be oriented. I know that this line has to align with the text on the cable but check on your bike so the battery cable doesn't have to twist when you route it through the bike. I'm just going to go ahead and crimp this into place. These pliers can be used for a few different sizes so if you have to change that just press this button and then you can rotate this. So I actually want to use 16 like this, just place the wire lug into the crimp pliers. And I would actually suggest to crimp twice because that way you get a much better connection. So place it all the way forward into the crimp pliers as far as possible and then check the orientation and give it a good squeeze. And then you can open this back up. The only downside with these pliers is that you get one tiny nose that we need to file off in just a second. But we're going to do a second crimp a little bit further back. So place this in here again, but rotate it a little bit like so. And then we're just going to give it a good squeeze again. Open that back up. Last thing is a pull test before we actually clean this off. This little sharp edge is the only real downside that I think you have with those super cheap crimp pliers. There are more expensive hydraulic versions out there that I don't really know if they do a better job, but if you try one, let me know down below in the comments. I think if you're careful and file this off to a point where it's not gonna cut through the insulation and cut anything else, but also you don't take away too much material, then you're absolutely fine. The last step is to install the heat shrink. For the small ultra bat that I'm using, I can't really use the 90 degree bend terminals because they don't fit into this cutout right here. So what I did was I took a regular straight M5 terminal and I placed it in the vise and used a little metal rod to bend it to the degree that I needed to. So now they look like this and that actually fits nicely in here.
So that is what the finished terminal looks like. You get very high quality battery cables with solid connections with a relatively cheap tool. And the good thing is that you don't have to solder, which can create a weak spot right after the wire lock where the cable gets brittle and then it can break. I know people use this method and have no problems at all, but I don't want to risk that. So I feel like this is a very good solution for relatively cheap. I'm very happy with the results and I hope this helps you to make your own battery cables. If you want to watch the rest of the BMW wiring, then check out this video right here. As always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.